In class activity one, root locus design. Design a lead compensator, GC of Z, for the system described by the following transfer function that will result in a stable system with a 20% overshoot and a settling time of 10 seconds. The sampling period is T is equal to one second, where the plan is one over S times S plus one, and the form of the controller is a lead compensator K times Z minus A over Z minus B. So the first thing we need to do is to convert the plant to discrete time because we're designing a digital controller. So we're going to do this by using a zero order hold. So recall that our zero order hold had the form one minus E to the negative ST over S. So our new plant will be the product of the zero order hold times the original plant. So this is going to be one minus E to the negative ST times GP of S over S, which becomes one minus E to the negative ST times one over S squared minus one over S plus one over S plus one. Our next step is to take the Z transform of this expression to convert it to the Z domain. So we'll have G P of Z equals the Z transform of G P of S, which equals one minus Z inverse times the quantity T Z over Z minus one squared minus Z over Z minus one plus Z over Z minus E to the negative T. If T, the sampling period is equal to one second, our plant simplifies to GP of Z is equal to 0 0.368 times Z plus 0 0.718 over Z minus one times Z minus 0.368. So we're now gonna create the root locus where we have poles at one and 0 0.368 and we have a zero at negative 0 0.718. Let's take a look at the root locus. So here we have the uncompensated root locus on the left and the compensated root locus on the right, which we will revisit shortly after we design the controller. So you see here that we have our zero at negative 0 0.718. We have our pole at one and we have our pole at 0 0.368. So what happens here is these two poles come together and they split apart and they go over to the real negative real axis. And then one pole goes to the zero at negative 0 0.718 and the other one goes out to the zero at infinity. So this is k is equal to zero, k is equal to zero, k is equal to infinity. And we know that the range of stability for this is between k between zero and 2.27. So that means that somewhere along this plot here, these poles are gonna cross over the unit circle. And at that point, we call it somewhere around here, K is equal to 2.27, and that's where the system becomes marginally stable onto unstable. So now let's start the design. For the first part of the design, we're gonna find zeta. So zeta must be greater than or equal to 0 0.6 times 1 minus the required 20% overshoot, or 20 over 100, which is equal to 0 0.48. So zeta must be greater than or equal to 0 0.48, so we're going to let zeta equal 0 0.5. Our settling time is 4.6 over zeta omega sub n, and that must equal 10. And from this equation, we get that omega n 
is equal to 0 0.92. So now we're going to use our design charts in order to find the required closed loop poles. So our design chart gives omega n values in terms of integer multiples of n and pi. So we're going to solve for that. So n is going to equal omega n over pi or 0 0.92 over pi, which is equal to 0 0.292 or approximately 0 0.3. So on the chart, we would look for the point where we can find 0 0.3 pi over omega n. Next, we go to the chart and we look for zeta equal to 0 0.5 and omega n equal 0 0.3 pi where well, we recall that our sampling period is one second. And alternately, we can also go to our chart and look for zeta equal to 0 0.5 and a settling time equal to 10 seconds. Remember, we had two different charts, one for settling time and one for omega n. We're going to get desired closed loop poles from each. So here we have our design chart for constant zeta and constant omega n. And we're going to try to find the desired closed loop poles. So zeta equal to 0 0.5 is this curve right here. And omega n equal to 0 0.3 pi. It's a little cut off, but it's this curve right here. So the intersection of those two curves is right here. So we're going to estimate that our desired closed loop pole is 0 0.4 plus J 0 0.5. Okay, here's our other design chart that has constant settling time and constant damping ratio. So once again, we find zeta equal to 0 0.5, which is this curve right here. And we find the intersection between that and our concentric circle for a settling time of 10, which is this one right here. And we see that the intersection between those two curves is approximately 0 0.5 plus j 0 0.4. So that would be our desired closed loop poles using this chart compared to using 0 0.4 plus j 0 0.5 using the first chart. So since all of this is an approximation, either one of those two would be acceptable because you would have to verify and probably tweak it using MATLAB when you finish anyway. Okay, so we're going to use our desired closed loop poles of 0 0.5 plus or minus j 0 0.4, and I'm going to calculate the angle deficiency. So what I'm going to do here is make a real and an imaginary axis, and I'm going to mark on it 0 0.5 plus j 4 here. And then I'm also going to mark our original poles and zeros. So here we had negative 0 0.718. Here we had 0 0.368. And here we had one. So I'm going to find the angle deficiency between all of these values and our desired closed loop pole. So I'm going to find this angle, this angle, and this angle. So the first thing we do is we sum the angles from the zeros and we subtract the angles from the poles. So the angle from the zero is the arctangent of 0 0.4 minus zero over 0 0.5 plus 0, 0.718 minus the angle 
from the 0 0.368 pole is the arctangent of 0 0.4 minus 0 over 0 0.5 minus 0 0.368 minus the angle from 1. And notice I put a 180 here because this angle is actually greater than 90 degrees. So it's going to be 180 minus the arctangent of 0 0.4 minus 0 over 1 minus 0 0.5. So that angle is 18.18 minus 71.74 minus 141. So the angle deficiency is 180 plus PS, which is negative 14.557 degrees. Therefore, we're gonna need a lead compensator to add back 14.557 degrees. So the first thing we're going to do is we know that the form for the lead compensator is going to be G C of S is equal to K times Z plus Z lead over Z plus P lead. So what we're going to do is to pick a zero to cancel out one of our terms. And I've decided to cancel out the pole at 0 0.368. So this is going to be K times Z minus 0 0.368 over Z minus plus P lead. So now what we do is we recalculate our angle deficiency now that we have canceled out one of the poles and our new angle deficiency is 180 plus 18.18 minus 141 which equals 56.84 degrees. So we are going to need our pole to subtract off the 56.84 degrees. So we'll have the tangent of 56.84 degrees is equal to 0 0.4 minus 0 over 0 0.5 minus P lead. And when we solve for that, we get that P lead is equal to 0 0.24. So our compensator is now K times Z minus 3.68 over Z minus 0 0.24. Now that we have taken care of our angle criterion, our last step is to use the magnitude criterion to find the gain for the compensator. So what we're going to have here is the magnitude of K times Z minus 3.68 over Z minus 0 0.24 times 0 0.368, this is our original plant, times Z plus 0 0.718 over Z minus 1 times Z minus 0 0.368, evaluated at Z equals 0 0.5 plus J 0 0.4, must equal one. And when we solve for the controller gain, we get that K is equal to 0 0.647. So finally, our answer is G C of S is equal to 0 0.647 times Z minus 0 0.368 over Z minus 0 0.24. So now let's go examine our compensator as well as the step response once we've added this controller.